Hello and welcome, Donick. Hey, Jason. <laughs> okay, so when I asked you your primary goal of what you want to get out of VFX Apprentice, you say that you work in the industry as a tech artist and VFX artist, and you find that you fall back a lot on the same techniques. So yeah. that's causing them to look a little too similar. And if possible, you'd like to improve those techniques and learn some new ones to improve your eye for critiquing the visual effects. So uh, how about you elaborate? Like how long have you been doing this for? What's like your common experience specifically and what are you excited to get out of the class? Um, so in terms of experience, like professionally, just as a VFX and tech artist, uh, I've only been doing that for maybe two-ish years now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's ranged very differently because like in the beginning of my career, um, I started off doing a lot more 3D stuff. And now I'm primarily focused on 2D because that's just the games that my company works on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, my experience as like in the industry as a whole is closer to around six years. Uh, but in the earlier times, I was working as a concept artist and then also working as uh, like 3D lead and stuff like that. Got it. Um, cool. Just the one thing I find I get into habits too is kind of like with this, like some of the stuff you'll see is I default back to the same techniques. And it's only recently I've started slowly trying to expand and incorporate like a little bit more shader work and trying to do like some interesting dissolves. But mm -hmm. because I'm not allowed to always use like say meshes to do something interesting with and things like that, um, mostly just because they're not sure how the game can handle it based on devices and performance and stuff. Um, it does kind of feel like my capabilities get limited. And so sure. The it comes down to I guess making more interesting styles and textures and things then to like make things yeah. look nicer. Well, I would say it's surprising what can run on a phone these days, and it's not always what you think. So I would push back a little bit and say, okay. well, let's run some benchmarks, let's run some tests and see if it actually does slow things down if we use meshes, because meshes specifically, in my experience, are not the worst like they're not that bad usually it's more about lots of translucency overlapping itself and right. um, more instructions in the material but like a mesh here and there not usually a major concern for performance especially if it's not overlapping a lot with itself or with other meshes it should be mostly fine so that one okay. specifically i'd look into also uh, you can have a lot of fun with materials if you use like masked materials right so if they're not translucent materials, but they're masked at the edges, either on or off, you can do some really wild stuff with dissolves and things like that that feel really creative and interesting. And they don't add a lot of complexity to rendering. And those can be really successful too. Okay. So there's at least two things for you to try just before we even dive in. Uh, but I'm going to open, crack this open now. Let's see here. Let's see if I can make this big and if it will stay big or if it gets small again every time it loops. Gosh dang it. It gets small every time it loops. Okay. So let's see what we got. We got the butterfly, the little flip, the little poof. I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to leave it small, I guess. No worries. But that's just not acceptable. Maybe I turn off looping. And then if it does it again, I'll just cry. Oh no, that was weird. <laughs> okay, anywho, so coming through here, I think the smoke poof, the, we're looking at the smoke poof, right? Uh, just the effect as a whole, I guess. But um, I guess the smoke poof would be the main area to critique. Yeah, so I feel like, I feel like it's, it's solid enough for what it is, but could be a little more clear of what's happening. Like, so the smoke is, is poofing. Tell me what the even the game design is. Oh, that's a huge pain in the neck. That's way worse than looping. Let's turn on looping. 
So tell me about what the mechanic is here. So this card poofs, and then it disappears. And so um, in our game, we have certain cards that are like linked to what the element is. So in this case, like we have a butterfly and then a butterfly net card. And so once you activate the butterfly net card, like you unveil, like you get rid of all the cards on top of that card in particular, the butterfly net will activate and then it'll get the butterfly off the card you're trying to play on. Because until the butterfly is removed, you can't activate that card. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm with you now. So I would say I'm I'm missing the connection right now that there was a net here on the card. Okay. That then came up here. I guess I, I see it now. I guess if I knew that, if I was playing the game and I knew that was going to happen, I would watch for it more. But I think what you need is a little bit of travel time for when this comes off, um, even if, you know, their setup is two different things, right? Because the butterfly might be over here, or over here. So the net traveling to that is kind of weird. Um, but even if there was enough setup where it's like you click on it, this comes off, and then there's a wind up of this card is about to activate. And maybe the net changes color or glows a little bit, or even if just... Okay even if just the card were to glow and then to snap into that explosion so that it draws the eye to the card and you see it with the net on it. And then it, as the smoke clears, the, um, the net is gone, right? Okay. Now you have similar smoke where the net appears. So it goes poof and it's gone and then poof, it appears, right? right. So the brain is registering, oh, it disappeared. Oh, there it is. That's cool. You know, what a satisfying card. You know, it's going to get a really nice feeling that way. And um, as far as it shrinking away, I guess that's fine. I guess like once the net's gone, it shrinks away in place. That seems like a good fit because it's not useful anymore and it just goes. Right. Um. Then the net swiping the butterfly. I think it could be a little more satisfying because it's like, a, yeah, I got rid of that butterfly. It feels good. Um, right now, the, the blue happens to be overlaid. Let me see if I can get to it. The blue happens to be overlaid on top of something else that's blue and the white is on the white. And yeah. so I'm really missing this effect completely. Okay. This nice, satisfying snap of like, I got the butterfly, feels good. Um, you're going to need to figure out with different colors, like how you're going to get that to read over the top of a white card that's, sur that's often surrounded by blue. I know sometimes they it might be this other background, but um, just going purely additive where it's such a high key environment and high key cards, uh, something white and additive on top of that is not going to read very clearly. Yeah, you don't want something uh, dark, so it's a tricky one. Yeah, that's a problem we run into quite a bit. Um, I did like use some shaders where instead of just like straight additive, we'd have like the um, blizzard, uh, like add blend kind of shader. So this way it never like fully maxes out to just bright white. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's expensive because it's a second render pass, which isn't always a big deal depending on what you're using it for. Um, but the, the major problem with this kind of scenario is I even though I'm doing the VFX for the images and stuff like that, uh, I don't actually get to pick the colors of certain things because we have a concept team for that. So yeah. I can change like the white impact to definitely have more color and stuff like that, but changing the actual butterfly net to be a different color is not my call, unfortunately. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. But the the other notes of like definitely putting more emphasis on the net card before things happen and then having the secondary uh, smoke poof and things like that going on is definitely something we can do and like improve upon. So that's good. Yeah. Sweet. Let's move along. Got a lot to go through here. If there's any of these that you would prefer to hit first to make sure we get them in the, in the time we have, just let me know.
All right, the classic portal. Yeah, I think it's a pretty solid looking portal. Uh, it could use some love as far as uh, the motion. So okay. right now, um, all the motion in it is pretty uniform. So what I'm not seeing is like maybe some elements suck in a little more or, uh, you know, some drift a little more slowly around the periphery or okay. maybe at the, the center of it, you know, maybe that, uh, the dark part at the center can kind of like, like fluctuate. Like it's like, you know, a little more unstable or like angry grabbing things, you know, it looks like a pretty brooding color palette. So, I don't know if that's like intended that it's kind of this evil portal or what. Uh, yeah, overall, we just wanted to give the effect of like a negative, um, like kind of hazard that would happen. Got it. Man, you're just playing cards at the fairgrounds and this evil portal shows up. I hate it when that happens. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, I think too, like stylistically it's a bit off style from the rest of the game okay I would, I would hope to see more crisp shapes like it's got a lot of very soft very fuzzy shapes i would okay i would hope in those textures to see like more hard lines carved out and it doesn't mean it has to all be fully opaque it's just it's really going to help if you sharpen up some of those edges and and get rid of a lot of the fuzz that's happening because it really does feel like it's coming from a different game, which maybe is what you want because it's like from another dimension. <laughs> um, but if you don't, if you want it to feel like a, something, an effect that sits well in this game, uh, you're going to want to, you're going to want to adjust that for sure, for sure. So would this be kind of one of those scenarios? Um, like I was watching the concepting phase of uh the videos as part of your course um is it a case where we'd like it might be better to make them crisp as edges and then like add like a bit of like a softer outer glow fuzz to it so this way it still retains that kind of cartooniness but also still kind of looks like a gaseous thing yeah or i mean would it... you recommend just like try going hard on it and maybe putting like a gradient through it or something it really depends on the stylistic guidelines of the game you're on some games might have a, a softer fuzz around the crisper aspects others might not and so i think just leaning into the stylistic constraints that you have i mean the clouds are gaseous up here right and they're very crisp with just a gradient inside and right. so i'm looking i'm just basing it off of what i see here maybe in other parts of the game there are softer fuzzier edges but from what I'm seeing here, it feels out of place based on the context that I see. So yeah, that'd be my thought is like, this actually calls for something that is much more crisp with some, okay. with some gradients in it, perhaps like the clouds that you see there. Yeah. Cool. Tell me about this. Um, so this was based actually off your lightning tutorial and like I was doing a test for one of the hazards we might have. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference is like rather than a solid bolt or like a constant stream, we needed kind of like a little jolt. Um, so I did make like the animated underline and then like the secondary like actions and stuff and then tried to have this jolt follow that, mm -hmm. which kind of evened it out to make it feel more samey so if i had like the full line it would actually have like a lot of variation to it but as it's like following the line and then trying to adjust it's like a lot of the same repetition i noticed interesting yeah i feel like i feel like it's it's solid for uh in isolation as i'm seeing it i think it's good i think it has more detail than the game that you're working on would have so again it's more of a stylistic choice of right. like you know simplifying out those shapes maybe uh maybe doing a little less of the repetition 
wonder if hmm. give me a second here uh, no I don't want that one I'm trying to grab a screenshot of this ah. Like and freeze. There, got it. Perfect. Okay. I can switch back to this. All right. So in here, we've got this image, and oh my, my cursor is not going to show up at all. This is kind of the worst. I'm going to have to switch over to Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. All right, here. File new, create. There we go. Let's pop over to that. Okay. So um, in here, you've got lots of tiny little shapes kind of weaving in and out. And they become more pronounced at different parts. I didn't capture the parts where I'm seeing these really pronounced. But I think um, what you could do is just not have them weave so frequently. Okay. So maybe, you know, there's like one weave here and then a weave here and then a weave here and then a weave here. And that will help define the overall line of action in this thing. So right now it's kind of just wiggle, 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 wiggle the whole way through. But electricity sometimes just arcs very straight. Actually, when I think about it, this is probably closer to realistic electricity, what you're seeing here. <laughs> like, realistic lightning, when you look at it, it's not actually super interesting in its shape profile. It actually does kind of do what you're doing here. So kudos for nailing a more realistic type of lightning. But <laughs> I think for a game that's more, like, uh, friendly and uh, life, like, full of personality and, and that in the style, uh, try to make the lightning friendly and full of life and, and take take it from its base to make it do something a little unnatural, a little interesting. Yeah. Okay. Does yeah, like stylized would definitely be much more preferred because like as I see lightning examples, like unless I'm doing a AAA game, yeah, this lightning being too realistic would not be the di desired result because like all the stylized stuff looks yeah. great. And it's also... I find the forms of stylized show up way better for like that quick split second action. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even in AAA, they might want to do a little bit of something with the electricity to make it a little different from reality, or they might just want it to say, Nope, it needs to look like real bona fide electricity. Yeah. So it just depends. All right. Switching on back over. Oh, I just disappeared. There I am. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. The classic rockets flying out of the cards. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> this, is, this is a trope in a lot of games. It's like, you got the rockets. They blow stuff up. I like this one. This one's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is one of the ones where we got to put in some of the screen distortion and stuff like that, where we're still testing on like what devices that we support can have it without breaking. Sure. I think the impact could use some love. Okay. Namely that it feels very sparse at its core. So let's see if I can. So this is nice. This like, burst that happens at the beginning it's actually okay. it's actually quite nice um but then it very quickly becomes this pinpoint and right i don't i don't like it it all i see is the pinpoint i actually miss the spark that happens at first altogether an easy way to solve that is to just let that initial burst scale down into the core of this to sort of carry the core as this like residual hop hot spot so that these skinny sparks flying off of it don't create their own weird focal point 
Okay, cool. That actually like makes a ton of sense. That was one of the things where like I'm analyzing other people's explosions and wondering like what are they doing different that I can't seem to figure out to make theirs like last that little bit longer and like look nicer without using like a flipbook. Yeah. Yeah, you have the core element in there. And it's funny cuz like I that was lucky that I paused on that because it's there for maybe one or two frames. Yeah, everything in this game has to happen like super fast because the player, even while these effects are going on, the player can still tap and do a bunch of things and activate even more effects so it can just like yeah. keep chaining. Well, I mean, that's fair. But I think it could hang around for a couple more frames. Okay. Just to get down into the core of that to feel like a nice satisfying pop. What was that that I saw? Like the the smoke kind of flickers. It kind of like pulses again. Oh, um, so here. when I'm recording, um, I'm doing this in editor, and uh, for whatever reason, when I'm doing it in editor, there's the occasional hiccup while I'm like recording. Uh, uh, but if you're actually playing the game, that doesn't happen. Interesting. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, this is probably my favorite so far. I mean, it just has a nice punch to it. Are you doing much work with the assets in the class? Uh, I'm slowly going through that now. So, like, I'm doing the concepting phase, and I'm working on my explosion. Uh, I'm, I work on uh, two projects right now, so, like, that eats up a lot of my sure. free time. But I'm trying to, like, really bunker down and, like, get everything done so this way I can, like, focus on my VFX and improve. Sure. Uh so f where I'm at with the explosion, I'm just like now painting everything up and like getting all of those like intensities in there and trying to like, I did the rough thumbnail sketches and stuff and like planning all of that out. Um, and then I'm looking forward to the part where I actually like you show off like how to implement it in engine and like kind of some of the tricks we can use, like either using meshes and scrolling textures and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, I think that's going to be a huge benefit when you get to the, the 3D portion, seeing those assets, you, you talked about like studying other people's work, like that's exactly what the 3D portion is, is like studying how those explosions are done uh, to create your own. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time for you. Is this another, this is a black hole that's different from a portal or is it the same one? Uh, I guess this is this. Yeah, sorry. The black hole probably repeats, so we can skip over that part. Uh, I wonder if the freeze card actually happens. Oh, I like one. the shimmery icy. That's cool. Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Um. So the particles on this one do preemptively end. Uh, we did fix that part to make everything happen. Apparently, there was like an animator hitch where because the animator was ending the effect prematurely, the particles just die. They don't, uh, like, fade like they were supposed to. Yeah, yeah. I think the trouble I'm having is um, is that the snowflakes and the chunks of ice are behaving the same. Okay. And so it just ends up creating busy noise. Like, I think the the snowflakes maybe warrant a more subtle motion where they, they more or less stay in place and like flutter down and just sort of fall where maybe the ice bursts more violently and flies out. Oh, okay. But having two different textures move identically is usually not a good idea because if they look different, they should probably move a little different. There's probably some quality about them. Otherwise there's no purpose in having them look different. Right. <laughs> Okay. When the ice forms, I feel like those shapes could have a bit more interest uh, when the cracks form. I love the shimmer, by the way. That's really cool. It's a great example of integrating a material that feels good with the stylized feeling that you've got. Yeah, like how yeah. it shimmers just, over. So for that, we just, like, we do the shimmer um, as, like, a line that we can soften out, and that's all just done with math. Like, we didn't use a texture for it. Um, and then we just make it run over normals. Cool. Or, well, not normals. Uh, sorry, we actually, like, use a black and white texture that just, like, kind of subtracts from it. But, like, we implement them kind of like normals. Sure. So I think for this, um, 
each one of these shards is the same width or okay. very close to the same width. So I'd erase some of these out to create some bigger shards. Um, this is nice how it bridges across here. It's sad that I can't really see it because the it's not happening on a darker contrast area. It's like a lighter area and it's right by the nine and so I miss it. Um, I think it's kind of strange that they all come to a, the exact same point. Maybe it could still more or less be radial in nature, but maybe they kind of bridge to each other sometimes. Okay. Versus, you know, like maybe there's a section that cuts across multiples, like something like that. I think could make it feel a little more designed. So, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, that's good to know. Uh, that's actually, so, like, getting caught up in things, like, I didn't notice how much the width was very consistent all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. That's an easy one to overlook when you're kind of, you know, heads down working on it. Cool. The apocalypse. I like it. I think the distortion, it makes it feel like, maybe this is supposed to feel like it's underwater, but it does feel like raindrops hitting water. Okay. Because it's so much distortion and it goes out so far beyond the impact. The The trouble I'm having is that it's a lot of distortion, but then there's no um, fiery elements to support it. Oh, okay. So like if there was a fire ring that matched the size of the distortion, then I could buy that it was a heat wave causing that distortion. But in the absence of that, where the distortion is the leading edge, it feels like a water ripple. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, the fireballs move so fast, they don't need to be that sophisticated with their animation, but... They could maybe use a little something of like some flame licks or something that they emit. Um, okay. I know there's like the sparks kind of flying up. Are those just so, amb ambient? Yeah, those are just like a, a subtle particle system that we just have like going off of the trail. Okay. Um, but with that in mind, like because, yeah, they're going by so fast, I guess I could just make it one particle system across the screen that's just like very generalized. Yeah, like ash falling from the sky. Yeah. Because right now, the fireball is moving so fast, and those are moving in like the opposite direction. And so there's nothing like keeping with the fireball. So as the fireball is coming down, there's no like bits that are sort of like, you know, drifting slowly behind it, tumbling through the air to kind of like try and catch up with the fireball, but they're like left behind, you know? Like just kind of wisping around and stuff like that. Okay. So come down. Yeah. And then the last one, time warp. And yeah, so this was just a like a generic effect used for some UI. We just needed like what was described as a time warp, basically. I like it. I think it's it's one of the nicer ones. It ties in with this glow on it. Makes it feel grounded to it. Like the glow is painted on it, right? And then yeah. you've matched that. I think it's pretty good. Again, just evaluating like stylistic choices. Like do the effects, are the effects more fuzzy? Is that okay? Is that what you want? Or do you want it to have a crisper edge? Um, yeah, I think it feels good. I like the little bits that fly off of it. Yeah, we just needed like, I was looking at it and the, the warp effect behind it is nice, but it needed like some sort of secondary element just to make it a little more appealing. They probably move too evenly. Like they don't slow, well, they slow down a bit at the end of their life. They're pretty good, but they're also really, really tiny, especially oh, okay. since I'm guessing this is zoomed in quite a bit. Um, they're probably going to be hard to read given how small they are on the screen. Okay. 
Another thing to consider with the little plus signs. Um, let's see if I can catch one. Yeah, so this like little plus sign. It's a commonly used uh, texture for a lens flare, but lens flares don't actually rotate unless, like, let's see. Lens flares don't rotate except under specific conditions of like the angle changing or something interesting like that. But if they do rotate, they all rotate. Oh, just like uh, like uh, uniformly, all uniformly. of them as a whole would do it. Yeah. yeah. So this is a common thing is like, I'll put a lens flare texture in and then I'll just rotate it because that feels fun. Well, it actually feels more like a snowflake when you do that and not like a lens effect. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Like uh, lens, sometimes we do it anyway. Like we break that rule all the time knowingly and it can feel fine. It's just be conscious that like, in the real world, lens flares are always aligned with each other and they rotate. If they rotate, they rotate together. So Okay, cool. It's just something to think about. Uh, they're not super convincing as lens flares either because they don't have like a gradient fall off to them. It, like, yeah, they, I was kind of like just so. using that texture as like just to reuse textures that we have in the game. So we're not like over and over again, like introducing a new mm -hmm. texture and like increasing the app size. Um, mm -hmm. I was just reusing something we had to get like a general like shimmer effect. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's like not super convincing. So like it's something I can go back and revisit and try to incorporate like a better texture that can like maybe do a little bit of like a flickering and introduce some noise to it. Yeah. 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 All right. Anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Like with the overall takeaway points, I guess it seems like consistency with the style so trying to like introduce some more like sharper shapes seems to be the biggest critique as well as like some of the timing and things like that um uh, yeah other than so. like stylized effects like is there something you feel like i'm not making best use of in unity because a lot of this right now is just like simple use of like tricks in the particle system and like some shader like distortion and noise um but is there like some key elements you use on a day-to-day -day basis that you feel like could really help some of this along that I haven't really been using? I think you might have a lot of fun with a mask material to match the sort of cartoony vibe on everything. Okay. And doing some dissolves on mask stuff. Um, maybe even with some of these same textures, these soft textures that have that really interesting fall off and things. But then masked, it's going to be a, a different style. The team might need some time to get used to it. <laughs> but you can tell them, hey, it's optimized and it fits the style better. And you could just do some experiments with that, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. That'd be the biggest one to try out. Uh, you mentioned being uh, reticent to try meshes. Uh, there are some places where you could do meshes, but probably it being more of a 2D game. I don't think that's as big of a deal. You might try some flip books frame by frame, you know, Okay. going through like you did with the electricity, trying to bring out those skills and see what you can get with it. Flip books obviously take up more texture size, but it's a very simple shader. So yeah, it's the give and take. Yeah. But yeah, man, I think it's cool stuff. I think uh, it's coming together. I honestly, everything you've got serves its purpose to like achieve aside from like the, the net, I think the net had some gameplay concerns, but most of the other stuff I was like, yeah, it tells me what's happening. It's doing the work, uh, feels fairly satisfying. I think it's just a lot of polish to get it more satisfying. It's yeah. Really that's, and like, I super appreciate that. Like, sorry, not to like give you a bunch of stuff from work. I just like looked no, at some fine. of the VFX I did from like before that I could show and they felt very lacking in terms of like skill level based on like the stuff I would, I've been recently doing. Yeah. Um, cause the VFX I would do before, like really did not make good use of shaders and stuff as well. So they were like pretty much what you saw here, but even less. Right. Well, all um, of us are on a growth curve, right? Like it's, it's painful to look at the older work and be like, Oh man, I've come so far. And it's great to see the fresher stuff. I, I like that. It's your work stuff. Cause that's your most relevant recent stuff. So. Yeah, and like even now with um, like I am actually starting to use mass textures and stuff like that at work. It's just like in key situations, but mm -hmm. uh, I 
do definitely notice I'm like constantly reviewing stuff and seeing like where is this lacking. But with your critique today, like that definitely helped me target in on some areas where I can definitely improve. So I appreciate cool. it. Glad I could help. Thanks so much. Yeah, of course, man. You have yourself a good weekend. You too. All right. See ya.